the earth is going to change. And God stays the same. We have to stop making our circumstances synonymous with the Savior. Just because you lost your job doesn't mean something changed with Jesus. Just because your money is low doesn't mean the master is not still high. Even though the earth should change and chaos hits, Christ is steady. Good morning. It's good to be here. We had a great time yesterday with the men. Continuously becoming the men that God has called us to be. Um, it's an honor this morning. Let me tell you, let me put it this way. My dad has been there for all of my challenges. He's been there for a lot of y'all challenges. Whether it's counseling, whether it's preaching, radio, some of y'all, YouTube, whatever medium it's been, he's been there. So it's an honor for me to return the favor. And people have been asking me all week, how do you feel? Well, let me tell you, I feel like we've already won. I feel like we're on offense, not defense. I feel like we already have victory. I feel like his word is true. I feel like he's gonna finish the work that he started. I feel like if it's not good yet, God's not done yet. I feel like all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. I feel like just because it's a shock to you doesn't mean it's a shock to him. I feel like Paul, when he was sitting in the prison and he said, I will rejoice for I know he will deliver me. I feel like Ephesians 1 that says we are already chosen, we're already called, we're already delivered, we're already redeemed, we're already adopted. So I feel like I should meditate on his word day and night and be like a tree that's firmly planted in streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, its leaf will not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. That's what I feel like. I feel like fearing the Lord and walking in his ways. I feel like we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I don't feel conquered, I feel like we have already won. And so I have to go not based on just the circumstances, but based on the reality of the Savior, because his word is true. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna play offense. We're gonna go and do and be what God has called us to go and do and be. And when he returns, when my dad returns, when that time comes, we're going to celebrate a victory we already knew beforehand that we had. Three days before my dad called the family, I was doing a Bible study in Psalm 46. And so I was studying that and y'all, I didn't get past the first two verses. I sat there for about 30 or 40 minutes and I kind of started feeling like I wasn't getting very far. And God was like, no, you're getting really far. I used to think that I needed to, you know, go through the book of Acts in five days to feel like I was getting somewhere. Oh yeah, I just did the book of Acts in five days, but I didn't really remember that much of it. I just read it. I learned more about God in two verses. Because if you just sit still in a space for long enough, 
He can tell you a whole lot about himself without you even turning the page. Little did I know that three days after, my dad would call us and tell us the exact same thing he told you, no more, no less. And then on Monday, he said, hey, I need you to preach Father's Day for me. I said, okay. And then I asked the Lord, I said, what do you want me to say? He said, I already showed you three days prior to your dad talking to you. He said, I'm telling you and preparing you but I'm also telling you what I want you to tell them. So today, I'm gonna to give you a lesson from my father. For my father and for all of his children. It's found in Psalm 46. I'm not gonna read the whole chapter, but I will read the first few verses. Why don't we stand to our feet? Now I want you to remember as I read until God tells me to stop that this, is, this was my random Bible study prior to hearing the news you heard. And this is what God told me in my random Bible study. He said, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar and the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. You may be seated. That was y'all the random Bible study. Not random at all. We serve a faithful God who already knows what's coming to you and will prepare you for the time. I just want to walk you through it. We're going to have devotions. Is that all right? He starts out by saying, the Lord is our refuge. Refuge already means that there is a storm or a war going on somewhere. In other words, I need to go find shelter. Based on the situation that I am, I need to go find somewhere where I can get cover from the storm or for, from the war or from the arrows or from whatever's coming at me. I need to find a place to go get shelter. Here he lets you know, I am that shelter. I am that refuge. I am your covering. That means there's an indictment on anything else you choose that's not me. A, a lot of people are choosing refuges and wonder why they're still getting beat up and getting pierced by the arrows and getting rained on. It's because your refuge is insufficient. It is not him. It is a fake. It postures itself like it can cover you, but only for us to continue to find out that it can't do what only God can do. People look for money to be a refuge. They realize real fast that don't work out that well. People use their education to be a refuge. They use technology as a refuge. They use drugs and alcohol as a refuge when trouble comes. They use all of these different things and the worst refuge that you can run to is yourself. <laughs> that I feel a certain type of way so I'm gonna let my feelings deter to determine how I'm covered. We use ourselves as a refuge. One of the things that some some men do, since we're talking about Father's Day, is they posture as if they have it all under control and they let their wives and children know, I am 
the refuge. The buck stops with me, only to find out when a storm comes, they are also insufficient. And now everybody's looking at them like, I thought you said, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Because now I know I'm not all that. And many of us go through the cycle all the time of finding out that we aren't the covering we thought we were. He says, I am the refuge. There is no place, let me help you understand. There is no place else for you to find covering. That's why I'm so glad my dad and my mom raised us pointing to the refuge. You say, well, how in the world can you hear that news and be stable? How in the world can you hear that news and come on the stage and talk about we're going to play offense and we're going to go this way and, uh, and quote those scriptures and, and feel like you're steady when there's so much steadiness going on? Because my dad said, son, Jesus is the refuge. That, that's what you're looking at and that's what you're looking to no matter what happens in this world. That he's the refuge. It wasn't that long ago, my, my daughter Kelsey and my son, J2. Yeah, I'm talking about y'all, they sit in the front row. Um, they went to a friend's house to hang out. It was four o'clock, it was time to pick them up. Um, I know I'm getting old because when I go pick you up, I want you to be ready. Like, <laughs> I don't wanna waste no time. You don't need to be respectful to your friends. Don't say bye, just be outside. Like we, so I'm, I'm aging. I know that I'm getting there now. I've done, my patience is short. When it's time to pick you up, you need to just be out there tapping your toe, just waiting. And then I go outside, and when I get out there, it's 4 o'clock, but it's dark. Y'all don't remember the last two weeks of rain? It, it was dark outside at 4. So now I'm extra in a hurry because I get to the house, I go around the cul-de-sac to pick up the kids, and it's, it's really gray, and so I'm already like, come on out, because that's, that's just what we do now. But now I know that it's about to rain, so it starts drizzling, and they still inside. So now I'm getting warm on the inside, because I told you five minutes ago to meet me outside, and you ain't, and now it's drizzling? Don't make me get out this car. Have anybody ever said that? Don't you make me get out this car. Because if I get out, it ain't gonna be good for you. So finally they came outside, and my friend came with an umbrella in the storm and was getting them all in the car. The problem was, it started hailing. Y'all remember that two weeks ago? Y'all may have been in your house. I, I was in my car. And all I hear is, ta, 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 ta. it is tearing my car up. The whole way home, I'm nervous because I don't know if my windshield is going to be able to hold up in this storm. And my car is getting torn up. Some of them hails were golf ball size. I mean, they were tearing my car up. And I was getting nervous. The kids were in the back covering the head. Wasn't getting hit, but we were insecure because the refuge was insufficient. I got close to my house and I, I pushed the garage door opener and let the garage up. Now I'm getting toe up from the flow up with this hail. But when the nose of my car got into my garage, hell wasn't hitting that part. When the windshield of my car got into my garage, hell stopped hitting that part. When the back of my car got in the garage, no hell was hitting it at all. I got out the car, looked out the garage, saw that it was still hailing, but it wasn't hailing on me. So now I found myself in an appropriate refuge for the storm because it didn't stop the storm, it just stopped my experience of it. John 10, 9 says, my door is open and those who come through my door will be saved. Not just for heaven, but also on earth. He's saying, I am the appropriate refuge. And some of you are still feeling the insecurity and the worry and the anxiety. That's because your refuge, what you're depending on is getting beat up. What you're depending on is insufficient. He says, if you come to me, I am the appropriate refuge for the hailstorm that you're going through. 
And so we got to understand that Jesus says, I'm open and I'm ready, but you keep choosing other stuff. You keep putting other gods before me, only to find out that that just makes you retrace back to me. And a lot of us are, are going through that because we, we haven't believed in the sufficiency of God for every area of our life. When you feel trouble, he says, come to me, I am the refuge. Proverbs 18, 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. That means if you wanna be safe, even if you're righteous, you better come to the Lord who is the strong tower or you won't be safe. You know that righteous people can actually not experience the salvation that they have for heaven on earth because they ignore the strong tower and think they're the strong tower? He says, I am your refuge, people. I know you live in this world and there's a lot of distractions, but let me remind you of this simple truth. I am your covering. There's nowhere else to go. There's no, there's no like second or third place here. It is the only option and you find that in God's word. So practically, when you're struggling or when you're hurt or when you're in trouble or when you feel down or when you have anxiety or when you're depressed, you open up God's word in the area that you're struggling in and you read it and you meditate on it so you can be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. That's called natural irrigation. Your leaf will not wither because it's planted where natural irrigation is. And whatever you do, you will prosper no matter what you feel because you're planted with the refuge. I'm just saying what it says, but it's deep because we don't do it. We have to be reminded of who God is. He says, I am the refuge. And then he says, then he says, guys, in the situation that you're facing, whatever it is or whatever we are facing as a church, I am also your strength. Amen. Amen. I mean, I know you agree when you hear it, but let me, let me just help you understand. If he is your strength, that means you're weak. Okay. It mean, when you do biblical observations, you have to also observe the opposite of what it says. Okay, so if, if, this, if God says, I'm your strength, it's an indictment on you. He's saying, you're weak. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, he says, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in your weakness. He then goes on to say, I don't boast about my strength. I boast about my weakness. Because when I boast about my weakness, the power of Jesus Christ dwells in me. So if you want to experience the power of Jesus Christ, you can't be boasting about your strength. You have to be willing to boast about your weakness. That's why my father is still teaching me who can get up and say, hey, I'm gonna take time for spiritual restoration and be restored because I fell short. That's a hard thing to do because people don't like talking about weaknesses. They only like talking about strengths. People wanna post these pretty pictures. That ain't you. You lying. You just making up stuff. For all have and fallen short of the glory of God. So if you know you ain't perfect, why are you so defensive all the time? Why you can't say, no, I'm not perfect, I'm weak, I struggle, I gotta grow, I'm not good, I gotta get better. Like, why do we never hear you say that if you also claim you're not perfect? It's a contradiction. You gotta be able to say, no, I I'm weak. Because then the power of God steps in and you get to experience what he can do once you're no longer in the way. Because, you know, the passive wrath of God will allow you to do it yourself. I mean, I raised my kids like that. 
They'd be like, well, dad, I want to do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Have at it. And now when I say it, more, <laughs> as soon as I say, all right, go ahead, they're like, yeah, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> they had to learn. Sometimes it's the experience of not having God's power that puts you in position where you're like, I'm not going to move without God's power. We've got to get to, that's why a lot of relationships and marriages struggle, because everybody writes. How you ain't never wrong? How you can't say, oh yeah, that's me, that's my bad. I see what you're saying. I didn't mean it that way, but I'm going to grow because I'm here to serve you. I'm not just here to try to get you to serve me. Then, then things get stronger because everybody is strong enough to admit that I'm not strong. You're a strong person if you can say, I'm weak. You're a weak person if you're always strong. I tell the young people across the street all the time, your maturity is based on you recognizing you're immature. If you think you're mature, that's what makes you immature. Because now you won't put yourself in a position of humility to learn. You think that you already know everything. And that's what makes you silly. Because I know you don't know nothing. Like, not nothing, nothing. You don't, I mean, your knowledge is so low. Like, it's way... And it's putting you in position for more mistakes, more issues, because you don't listen. But you don't listen because you think you're strong. But thinking you're strong is what makes you weak. He, he, he's saying, I'm your refuge and your strength, which means you're not any of those things. Never depend on this world or your works to get this thing done. Y'all see why I stayed in this verse for a second, in the devotions, because I'm your refuge and your strength. Then he says, I'm a very present help in a time of trouble. Man, that's good news. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> okay. When people experience trouble, they think God is truant. No, okay. They equate trouble with truancy of God. So if I'm in trouble, where God at? No, no, he says, when you're in trouble, I'm present. I, I need you to know that, when, that, that the presence of the Lord is at OCBF and in your personal life. That, that, that your trouble is not somehow an indictment on his consistency. He's present in your life. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, do not be afraid for the Lord your God is with you. As I recall through the life of Joseph, even in the prison or whatever he was going through, the Lord was with Joseph. In Joshua 1, 9, do not be discouraged or afraid for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for if you, if you roll through the Bible, you'll see at the heart, I mean, wasn't Daniel in a lion's den with lions who just weren't hungry all of a sudden? Weren't there three in the fire in the book of Daniel? No, there were four. Because in the fire, there was a fourth person who was with them. He's present in trouble. So if he's present in trouble, stop tripping. I mean, okay. He's not just present. It says he's very present. 
that very is an adverb that brings intensity to the adjective that's describing the noun. I learned that from my wife. My wife is the one that know all that. We, I was at home, so what's very? It's an adverb, babe. It's a, uh, I'm gonna need you to know this. We, I can't take all the credit. She's sitting there looking at me like this. The word adds intensity to the presence of God. That it's not just his presence. The cloud is filling the whole church. It is the very presence of God when you're in trouble. So when you experience trouble and turmoil, you need to know and remember Psalm 46 says, oh, he's not even, pre he's very present. Which means that your feelings can no longer be the criteria by which you function. Word, word and feelings don't have to, they, they don't have to be like together. They're not like in a good relationship. The, the truth and your feelings aren't on the same page. So if feelings are the criteria of our function, no wonder why we're always living in fear. But if faith is the criteria of function, then our fear can be extinguished by our faith. He says he's the very present help in the time of trouble. I mean, something can be sweet or it can be very sweet. Somebody can be tall or you can say that person is. A garden can be beautiful or you can say that is very. Now my expectations are much higher for what I'm looking at or what I'm about to taste or what I'm seeing. That your expectations of God in trouble, you should be looking, I'm in trouble. Everything in you should go to God because it's gonna be a very experience. There's gonna be intensity in my experience of God in the midst of my trouble. The adverb before present does not exist before trouble. It does not say very present and very trouble. It says very present trouble which means there's intensity on his presence, not intensity on the trouble. Most people think that the trouble, because of how I feel, is greater than his presence. That's not the case. The truth is, his presence trumps the trouble. So we have to stop acting like my trouble is greater than God when God is greater than my trouble. Okay, sing it with me. The presence of the Lord is here. Come on. The presence of the Lord is here. Feel an atmosphere. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Come on. The presence of the Lord. Sopranos, Sopranos. Y'all a little off beat now. Come on now. Y'all kind of. <laughs> y'all didn't just realize. Y'all all just got Bobby Gibson. I just Bobby Gibson, y'all. I just want you to take your moment just to sing it as a church. Because the presence of the Lord is here and does not suddenly go somewhere else when you feel like you're in trouble. It doubles down in the place. So how are we going to do this? We're going to do this together. We family and we're gonna believe on what the Lord says. He says, um, I'm your refuge, I'm your strength, I'm your very present help, which means I'm active, I'm not dormant. The Lord is your help, Psalm 121, 2. The Holy Spirit is the helper, John 14, 26, that he's there to lead you and guide you on this path as long as you don't push back against him. Many of you, the, the Spirit been trying to help you for years, just I mean, just, push, just pushing and prodding. The Spirit has been trying to, but you keep saying, that don't make sense. You keep saying, well, that direction isn't comfortable. You keep saying, well, that, let, how, let me justify this. And God has been talking 
but he's been talking outside of your comfort zone. He's been leading, but he's been leading outside of your direction. He's been planning, but he's been planning outside of your plans. So he's been trying, but he's not going to push somebody who don't want to go. He, he's there to help you. And for some, he's been trying for years. You keep talking to me about your trouble. I keep trying to push you to your triumph, but you won't let me. I'm just going to keep doing this my way. Okay. <laughs> Time runs out on us. It does not run out on God. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you with this. You know that accountability that I keep pushing you to that you keep saying you don't need because you're so strong? I've been trying to help you in your trouble. You keep thinking, sir, you can do it by yourself. Ma'am, when you talk to your friends, it's always about somebody else. It's never about you. I'm trying to help you. So if he's the refuge, if he's the strength, if he's very present, and he's the help, in your time of trouble, verse 2 says, therefore. So, I mean, you get to verse 2, and then it's about to tell you. Do not fear. My fear and my anxiety and my worry and my, I mean, first of all, it's unhealthy. The Bible says laughter is good for the bones. That means the opposite is not. Stress is not good. It'll mess your whole body up just being stressed. There's a physical aspect that if you're stressed and worried all the time, it's going to mess you up physically. Which means it's not good logically. Like, it's logically not a good thing. But if you're stressed all the time, there also is a spiritual aspect. It means I do not believe what you just said. And my lack of belief actually makes God smaller in my mind than what he actually is, and it messes me up physically. You're the refuge, you're the strength, you're the very present help in time of trouble, maybe. Because I'm going to be stressed to the max. I'm going to have fear over this situation that I can't control. I'm going to let fear steer me and not faith steer me. I'm going to let feelings tell me and not my Lord tell me. He's saying, therefore, he had to tell Joshua four times at the beginning in the first book, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. I mean, he had to tell him over and over again because he wasn't. Moses just died suddenly, like it wasn't no... Deuteronomy 34 says his vigor was not abated and his eyes were bright. Bang. So Joshua wasn't expecting. He was like, ooh, that's kind of quick. I'm not ready. There, there's a lot of people, and I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm ready, and the Lord did, he didn't care about that. Do not fear. I've got it. Moses said, um, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? What do you think he felt? Inadequacy and fear. God said, I don't, I don't, I'm not really asking you based on your resume. and I, I really don't care about that. God said, I am who I am. See, the problem, my dad often told me that a fruit that's eating itself is rotten. We so focused on us. 
that we can't get to the fact that God is the one who makes these things go. Um, I used to watch a NFL replay on NFL Network. Um, the NFL replay means the game's already over. I'm just going back to see it. So I would go watch NFL replay, which means I already know how the game's gonna go. I mean, I already know how it ends. So if there's a fumble, I don't care. If there's an interception, doesn't bother me at all. If somebody missed a tackle, I'm like, ah, oh, you should have made that tackle. But God is the Alpha and the Omega. This is a replay. You haven't seen it. He already did, he already went back and forward here. He just letting us find out what he already knew. So if you're tripping, you don't understand who he is. This, this is a replay. He's already seen it from front to back. We got to know that God knows where this thing is going. If you have victory, just wave your hands like this. If you're a winner, raise your hand like this. If you, okay. So everybody said, I have victory. And then leave the church and act like a victim. Oh, I can't. I, 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 I'm not saying you don't feel it. I feel it too. There's many, plenty of people I've told, oh man, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm telling you this is because this is what God has been teaching me. Therefore, do not fear. Okay. It says, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. This is a, uh, to keep it simple, this is a picture of chaos. Mountains going into the sea, that ain't right. Uh, seas in the Bible represent chaos. That's why they're non-existent in Revelation 22. Once you hit eternity, you'll see that it says, there are no more seas. Because seas in scripture represent chaos. Okay, and chaos is not allowed there. And so it's, it's telling you, I'm your refuge, I'm your strength, your very present help in the time of trouble. Even though the earth should change, even though the mountains slip into the sea and the waves foam and the earth quakes, you know there's change on the earth, right? Like, you know, there's different seasons, there's night and day, there's good days, bad days. Sometimes you like your boss, sometimes you don't. Uh, sometimes you're here, sometimes you're there. Sometimes the day works out well, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. The earth is going to change. And God stays the same. We have to stop making our circumstances synonymous with the Savior. Just because you lost your job doesn't mean something changed with Jesus. Just because your money is low doesn't mean the master is not still high. Even though the earth should change and chaos hits, Christ is steady. So where does the steadiness come from? Not in this world, not in your thoughts or perspective or feelings. That's a roller coaster. In the word. So you have to repeat it to yourself. And the more you repeat it to yourself, the more you start connecting with what you're repeating. Because a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I don't feel like reading. Some of you are readers. That's nice. I read two pages and my eyes start watering. Like, I'm not naturally. I'm, you know, me and my brother, squirrel. I mean, it's. But when I challenge myself to go and you start, man, that thing starts feeding you, doesn't it? It starts saying, yeah, you should have been here because it's stable. Okay. 
So now I'm gonna get ready to close like this. Um, I talked to you about the refuge and the strength, the very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, do not fear. Even though the earth should change and the mountain should slip into the sea and the, the, fo- the, the waves foam and the, the earth quakes, even though there's chaos, then God says, let me give you my resume. Verse four, he says, uh, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. This is rapid fire, so stay with me. The holy dwelling place of the most high. In other words, he's saying, I am the restorer. You know, there was a river in the garden that was restored in the garden. Revelation 22, there's a river that's crystal clear. He's saying, I've restored what was broken. I am the restorer. That's verse four. Verse five says, God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God uh, will help her when morning dawns. He's saying that I am the restorer and I'm reiterating to you that I am the help. That is my resume. I am in your midst. I am present. He's, he's, he's listing who he is. And then he goes on in verse six and he says, the nations made an uproar and the kingdoms tottered and he raised his voice and the earth melted. He's saying, I am the restorer. I am the help and I'm Elohim. I'm a beast. He said, I can say a word and melt the whole planet. And you worried about your trouble? I restore, I help, and if I spoke a word, all of this would be gone. He says in verse seven, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is a stronghold. He goes back and reiterates the stronghold. So you have restore, you have the help, you have Elohim, a beast. You have uh, one who is the stronghold. And he says, come behold the works of the Lord. Verse nine, he makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. Y'all didn't, he, he's letting you know. This, if you see this resume and you hire and you hire him immediately. The restorer, the help, the beast, the one who can speak a word. And then he says, I break the bow in two and slash the spears. The tools of weapons of war that come against you, I break those too. There are people aiming at you and God says, give me that. There are situations that are putting the spear back to throw it and he catches it in midair and slices it. Even the weapons of war would not be allowed to use, be used because of who he is. And then he closes. After he gives that resume, verse 10, this is the one you know. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, this is a reminder that we all needed today. I am the restorer, I am the help. I am all powerful, I can speak a word and melt the earth. Even the tools that come against you, I break those and slash them. So cease striving. What are you worried about? Why are you panicking? Where are you going? Oh, well, I gotta get this straight, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta this, I, I'm thinking about this, I'm insecure about this, I'm about that. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to go sit down, so you're making everybody nervous, you just. <laughs> stop. This doesn't mean that you stop stepping, it means you stop stressing. This is not a call of irresponsibility. This is saying you don't have to be an emotional wreck because God gives a peace that surpasses all understanding and he will guard your hearts in in Christ Jesus. So one of the evidence of people who have not, aren't able to be still In other words, they're not able to say, hey man, we heard the announcement, we're praying, but I know God's gonna work it out. 
So we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna do what God has called us to do. We're gonna celebrate on the return. We already won, so I'm not really... See, once you flip out in your circumstances, I'm not saying it's not hard. That's the reason for the, that's the reason this is available, because it's hard. I'm saying, we've got to get back to trusting. Amen. That God has already worked it out. My daughter, youngest, Bunny, Jade Winter, but we call her Bunny, jumping all over the place. Um, she was on the trampoline, and a wasp started flying around. It wasn't a black wasp, it was a red one. I knew that, she, did, she just knew it was a bug, but I was like, oh yeah, that's a red one. Um, that one will change your skin color. I ain't say that out loud. Uh, but she saw the wasp and took off running. Ah, you know, on the trampoline. She got off that trampoline. That's the fastest I've ever seen her get off that trampoline. She was like a cat. She was upside down and landed on two feet. And she started running and she started doing this. Because the wasp was generally following. You know, it wasn't paying no attention, but she thought it was following her. Then after jumping off the trampoline, she thought she escaped. Then the wasp was above her head. She started waving her hands. And then she ran into the house and closed the door, and the wasp slipped through. She was like, oh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> so her last option, Daddy! She jumped. I grabbed her, and she, the wasp, the wasp. That wasp flew and landed right here. <laughs> she said, ah. <laughs> You know how babies look at you like, you know, they just. <laughs> she looked at me up and down and said, Who you is? <laughs> Not who are you. Her face said, Who, who you is? Like, how did you just, I was running, panicking, yeah. trying to figure out, and you talking about. <laughs> and that's when I said, I'm your daddy. Yeah. Many of us are running and panicking. And your daddy has already opened the garage door. And he's standing there looking at you panicking. And if you would just jump into the refuge, you'll experience the mighty right hand of God. Squash the trouble. And keep you safe. So on this Father's Day, I just wanted to take a moment for you to really know who your daddy is. Because he's got it all under control. Let's stand to our feet. As we close, I'm gonna pray over all of you. For those who are struggling, for those who are experiencing trouble, for those who have anxiety about the future or what, where we go and how we do this and how we do this, it doesn't mean be irresponsible, but God has already laid it out. Our steps are ordered. Our job is just to walk in the steps Amen. and let him lead and guide. Heavenly Father, we love you and honor you and give you the praise and glory. Thank you for being our refuge and our strength. Thank you for being our very present help in the time of trouble. Even when things are changing, we don't need to fear because you have it all under control. Our trust is demonstrated by our faith in your word. And help us not to pass on stress. Help us to pass on the spirit. We give you a glory for everyone who has come. Take us home in your care. Help us to continue to encourage one another. And take us home as safely as you brought us. 
We love you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, all God's people said.